is Madeline. I just moved school this year and am currently a fifth grader at North Beach Elementary. I'm familiar with many types of math. At my old school, I used Turk. During math, we'd work a problem to death. Even though the answers were all obvious, we spent all of math writing to show and drawing pictures how we got the answer. Most of the answers we could get by doing mental math. None of the kids in my classroom could do long division unless they were taught by their parents. We were introduced at the end of the year how to multiply two digit times two digit, but no one was really good at it. I was never taught how to add unlike fractions. Then I found out I was going to move to North Beach for fifth grade where they use Saxon math. To get me ready over the summer, my mom made me practice with Singapore. I did it almost every day. It was hard work, but I learned different strategies for solving problems and I learned it fast. Things got much easier as I did more practice. Now I'm using Saxon math, and everything I had trouble with before, I now do every day. The start of every math lesson, I do some kind of time practice, like reducing fractions or doing uneven division. So what's wrong with Turk? Too many words and pictures and not enough numbers. That's why I'd recommend both Singapore and Saxon to anyone, because it's never too late to correct a mistake. This is the kind of thing I did last year in fourth grade. This is from the fourth grade Turk book, Landmarks in the Thousands. In this activity, choose a number to count by. Pick one that you think will land exactly on 300. Skip count by this number on your calculator. Does it work? If so, write the number and how many it takes to get to 300. First, I tried 6. I put in 6 plus 6 equals, and I got 12. Since I put in, since I put it in two times, I continue to count from there by pushing the equal button. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. Finally, I get to 300. So I know that 300 is divisible by 6. But I don't get what this lesson is about. Normally, it doesn't even teach me how to use a calculator the right way because I would put in 300 divided by 6, and that would equal 50, only that way is much faster. Since my new school uses Saxon math, I really learn how to work with numbers now. One of my favorite things from the Saxon book is how to connect fractions, percents, and decimals. In lesson 75, I learned that percents are like fractions with a denominator of 100. To convert a fraction into a percent, I just need to make it equivalent to a fraction with a denominator of 100. My fraction is 3 fourths. Since 4 goes into 100 25 times, I multiply it by 25 over 25, equal to 1. Since 3 times 25 is 75, 75 is a numerator, and 4 times 25 is 100, so 100 is a denominator, which is also equal to 0.75, or 75%. The next day, in Lesson 76, we learn a different way of doing that. I'll start with 3 fourths again. Then, we divide 3, divide by 4. Since 3 cannot be divided by 4, I have to add a decimal point and add a 0. Three goes in, 4 goes into 30 7 times, which equals 28. I bring down 2, then I add a 0. Since 4 goes into 20 5 times and I bring up a decimal point, I would also get 0.75 or 75%. I think it's cool that you can do this with either fractions or by dividing and still get the same answer. Once I learn these new ways to reduce, I use them as part of my 30 homework problems. I also talked about Singapore earlier. This is what it looks like. Singapore is not just about numbers. Look how it teaches you to multiply by decimals. It teaches me to think of 0.1 as a dime and 0.01 as a penny. 
In the fourth grade Singapore, I know that 0.03 times 2 equals 0.06 because 3 cents times 2 equals 6 cents, or 0.06 if you wrote it in dollar amounts. Therefore, 0.07 times 4 equals 0.28. If you think of it in terms of money, 28 cents. To take that further, I know that 0.12 divided by 2 equals 0.06, or 12 cents divided by 2 equals 6 cents. I hope that by looking at these examples, you can see why I like Saxon and Singapore better than Turk. Thank you for watching.